Okay, we, um, we're going to start uh, quickly. Um, let me make sure I'm recording it. Okay. Um, I'm going to share a folder before I continue, uh, just before I start, because uh, I got some uh, more images than what uh, you got from the email. So I want to share this. Share. <coughs> I will share in the chat room. So you can open another window, maybe if you want to see details of uh, the picture. Um, chat. Yeah, you can download them if later if you want. Okay. Um, court. I'll get the uh, water. <laughs> This place. <laughs> Sorry for the mess. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for. Uh, continued support of this uh, live class. Um, I really appreciate your participation because uh, uh, you made the, the uh, class more um, interactive and uh, more inspiring. Um, so I won't uh, really, I uh, can do this uh, uh, by myself, speaking to the to the air, you know. So I do want to see your face and your reactions if you want to share um, with uh, with uh, with me. And uh, uh, let me put. Uh, so if you let me let me ping myself, so you you can unmute yourself anytime and talk without showing your face. Uh, interrupt others. Let's see. So since it's a small class, we want more activity uh, in the class, in the classroom setting. So spotlight already, right? And that spotlight, yes. Okay. So today's uh, uh, master we're going to study is a very uh, unique case, or you might say uh, quite quite common uh, in. Uh, the uh, history of uh, Chinese uh, brush painting. Uh, that is the a, a, a longevity uh, artist who painted uh, till uh, 100, uh, 106 or 105, depending on how you count them. In East Asia, we count uh, 106, right? So he was born in 1980s, 92 and died uh, 1892 and died 1996. 
Um, his name is Zhu Qizhan. Zhu Qizhan. The, uh, this book I have is written by him. Uh, this is his first name, Qi Zhan. It's a quite a kind of rare for characters. Um, and his last name is Zhu. Um, he was born in the Qing Dynasty, as you can see in this uh, early picture. Uh, this is a picture of his uh, age of eight. He started to learn brush painting from private uh, tutor, tutoring school. Uh, like uh, our rich families. His family uh, was a very rich um, soy sauce maker or business uh, a company. Uh, they own um, a lot of branches uh, or stores in the uh, Yangtze River, um, lower Yangtze, Yangtze River Valley and the, uh, the Zhejiang uh, or Shanghai, uh, so they are very rich family. Uh, he's the third generation. And uh, he had no interest in continuing his family business. So he, uh, he at the uh, age of uh, 20, early 20s, I think, he engaged himself in uh, study art in the art academy uh, founded by Liu Haisu in Shanghai. And he uh, only one year after, because he's so excellent, he became a instructor in the school. And uh, he, uh, he didn't uh, uh, get approval from, approval from his father. He took a journey to uh, uh, a ship um, traveled to Japan to study. And he, later he, his family did support him though. So he's a very, um, kind of a uh, uh, very free uh, artist, unlike uh, other artists. Uh, uh, um, but he became self-supporting uh, from very early on as a teacher uh, in oil painting. He studied oil in Japan. Um, and he actually went twice uh, and returned to China to teach oil painting until 1949. He claimed himself, himself as a uh, um, oil painter or Western painter, if you like. But he had always kept uh, Chinese brush painting as his hobby. As he says in this title of the book, P, si, ji, P means hobby, si means zi, this, uh, like, you know, hobby of this. Uh, that refers to painting and calligraphy, I, can, I, I think. G means uh, uh, studio. So uh, this is on painting. He, he, his uh, um, words on painting in the um, hobby, this hobby studio. Uh, it's very uh, unusual name, but that's how he, um, he, he, he made it for the studio name, PCG. And his, uh, his name is Zhu Qizhan. So, um, he, as a hobby, he would paint in the night uh, while uh, after work of uh, uh, teaching oil painting. He, he was uh, uh, the department leader uh, of uh, the oil painting study. And um, um, after 1949, uh, because he, his oil painting style is very uh, expressionistic, or post-impressionism. Uh, he especially favored Matisse, uh, Fauvist uh, style, very bold, very um, uh, express, expressionistic kind of individual feeling of, uh, um, I mean, rather than realistic uh, painting of Xu Bei Hong, he was favored by the government after uh, the communist government after the um, 1949 become the mainstream the socialist the realism uh, dominant the uh, the arts circle after the 1949 so he abandoned his uh, um, his uh, impressionistic pen uh, oil painting completely um, anyway uh, I tried to find uh, you know some oil painting by him 
but I couldn't because uh, uh, all his collection was uh, burnt in file uh, with a ja Japanese bomb. Uh, so his studio in the countryside of uh, uh, Suzhou, I think, was uh, um, was completely destroyed. His collection of uh, Chinese painting as well. So, so uh, he had to restart again uh, in the in the new era after the revolution. He uh, his family business was confiscated or. Uh, what are, well, com you know, communism uh, would uh, uh, buy out the other uh, shares, you know, uh, eventually. And uh, he was given a gov government uh, uh, working position as a wage worker in uh, uh, Wen Shi Guan, where they kept the uh, kind of prestigious, uh, uh, but very honorable positions, you know, for people who had cultural backgrounds like him. So. Uh, Wen Shi mean, literally meaning literature and history, um, how? So he was uh, paid mostly without to worry about a uh, basic living uh, livelihood, but uh, he was uh, uh, no longer as a rich uh, patron of many artists' uh, friends, including his uh, mentor, uh, Qi Bai Shi. Uh, let me, while I'm talking, let me turn this uh, to his younger. So in his, uh, um, in the 20s, he uh, learned about Qi Bai Shi's painting and uh, especially he liked his uh, silk engraving. So he commissioned him. Um, actually, he first learned from Qi Bei Hong, a friend of him uh, in the art academy. Um, and Qi Bei Hong said, if you, uh, if you want to uh, get a seal like, uh, like mine, I, I can uh, ask Qi to carve for you. And he said no, um, it, because he know they are good friends. And he won't get uh, uh, the Qi will not, you know, ask for the best price. So he went through Rongbao Zai, a very prestigious uh, gallery kind of uh, dealer, uh, to commission him uh, anonymously. So Qi Bai Shi um, was uh, curious after receiving many commissions from the same uh, client in Shanghai. And eventually he learned his name is Chu Qizai and uh, they become uh, uh, pen pals, you know, writing to, uh, letters to each other for 20 years. And then they met in person uh, in Shanghai when Chi Bai Shi held a, a exhibition. Um, Chi Bai Shi didn't uh, plan to see anybody because he, his time is so precious. So he will paint in the hotel. But only uh, exception is uh, Zhu Xizai. So after 20 years, in the 1940s, they met each other. Um, so he got uh, 73 seals from Qi Bai Shi. Um, so he, he, he was, he's kind of a, a rich um, third generation a businessman, uh, but he didn't, he has his, uh, um, he doesn't involve in the business. Um, he just devoted himself in art and uh, um, sponsor other artists. Um, this is his uh, mid uh, 47, I think. Um, and then it's a 60. Yeah, 60. That's, uh, let me see, it's probably still. Um, before the, okay, this is the age uh, 80. So he still paint oil until 88 or something like that. And then he concentrated on brush painting only. Um, he has, uh, you know, he, he talked, he has some chapter about uh, Western and Eastern art, what we can learn from oil. And he basically he says, uh, uh, he doesn't really mean to fuse the two art traditions. He tried to, um, you know, like I said, he will paint oil in the, in the day and the, the uh, brush, Chinese pa brush painting in the night when he was uh, uh, teaching oil painting. And um, so he said, once you have studied um, both and they will influence each, uh, each other subconsciously, 
naturally, so to speak, naturally, intuitively. So if you try to, to force the marriage, it won't work. He tried to, he said, if you studied something, it will reflect, basically. This is what I, my interpretation. If, say, if you have studied uh, Master Seed Garden Manual of Pinyin, you know, in Chinese Pinyin, I think everybody did, he, he probably did it in his uh, early time. It will reflect in his uh, brush painting. And uh, if you, he, he, later he studied uh, uh, Western art, in, uh, like uh, he learned the color theory, the uh, math, uh, how to make uh, 3D, uh, the, the illusion of uh, uh, depth perspective. Uh, this will, will naturally happen, but he does not want to be bound by those rules by any rules in the end. And uh, his most favorite, his in, a source of inspiration is the music, Western classical music, especially an, um, an artist uh, from Finland, Finnish art, uh, composer named uh, John Sibelius. Am I correct? Sibelius. <laughs> You know, John Severus. He's a post uh, impressionistic composer, uh, Finnish uh, composer, because he, he, he sends the, the uh, uh, color in his, his music, uh, symphony. He, he, he um, interprets the, the wood tube sound like a blue and a, um, landscape. A little cooler, and uh, the bass, the, the bronze tube. I, I don't know how to uh, really say it professionally. The the horns, you know, the the brass horns, like like those, are uh, reddish colors in in landscape, and uh, of course the the violins, uh, the string music, like uh, uh, lines. So the the bass are more like the the thick uh, the the, the darks in, in landscape. So um, he would apply the, also the, especially the composition of music, um, the rhythm, he says, you know, uh, the, the speed change um, and uh, the color, I, I talked about the color variation um, and uh, the shape, uh, the, um, and the, including the pulse between chapters, um, is he compared that to empty space? So let the the, the viewer or the audience uh, to breathe. Uh, so that that all contribute to his. Uh, so probably he will turn on um, that kind of music, uh, symphony music, when he paint. Um, <clears throat> he painted uh, uh, until the last years, um, until like one hundred oh three or, or four, he died uh, at, uh, oh, actually he, he, he made a, a plan after his uh, 90s birthday, he had the first uh, one man exhibition um, in the National Gallery. And uh, later he made a goal. Every five years, he would uh, uh, have a one man show uh, with completely new paintings. So he will work every morning to paint this kind of large painting and in preparation for uh, the next uh, five year show. So um, he, he, the last one he did was uh, uh, 105. He, pre he was pre present as you can see in this picture. Let me show you. He's standing on the stage right there at the year of uh, uh, 105, 105. Uh, so he is still active. Very encouraging for for us to learn, right? And this this is the the uh, stage. It says uh, uh, Chu Qi Zan, 100 Yu Wu means and the five painting show in in hold, held in uh, Hong Kong. Okay. So he he he's very um, uh, 
so his secret of uh, uh, health and longevity is to set a goal. And uh, his mind never changed after his 90s. He just doing, you know, routinely. Um, so that, that, that's his secret to paint every day uh, for, for um, every five years he had a show. That's his uh, life goal. He achieved it. And he was actually not a very strong person in the, when he was young. He, he actually got sick in Japan and had to return to China uh, one year after. And then he, he returned um, back to Japan to continue study later. So he's, uh, he's, uh, he has you know, some health issues uh, when he was young, but uh, painting seemed uh, to keep him healthy. Um, and uh, here are some, uh, this is uh, done, I think in early, I'm not sure in, in, I didn't check the year, it could be in his mid age, uh, a simplest, simple, it's like new meaning, uh, Yen style landscape. And uh, uh, during the Cultural Revolution, uh, he cannot uh, paint for exhibition uh, in public for public, and so he um, studied ancient painting, revisited uh, other ancient masters like we we are doing in this class. But he will interpret the ancient uh, paintings uh, in his own um, language because he learned oil. You can see very colorful. Um, and the yin yang uh, is uh, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, stressed than the traditional painting. Uh, like this is this is another uh, Song Dynasty painting he copied. He will he will use color. And actually, I have a, a page I can show you on this book. The the uh, landscape from uh, the Song Dynasty master. Uh, this one, see, the, this one is also a uh, uh, copy of the uh, ancient uh, landscape, but uh, with uh, his own. He, he, you know, it's not, he it doesn't mean to really copy very um, uh, stroke to stroke. He, he interprets it in his own uh, voice, you might say. Anyway, um, the, the painting he did in uh, his late years are more, uh, Kind of like we call it pour, pouring, pouring ink or pouring color. Pouring, pouring, like the Zhang Daqian invented. Okay, this one is done in, um, I, I believe it's 100, 100, yeah, 100, year 100 at the age of 100. And this one is uh, also very late. You can tell from the style, I think. Let me see. Yeah, that's early, that, that's uh, later years. I'm not going to uh, read all the instructions. We don't, I mean, inscriptions, we don't have the time. Just to let you browse through um, this quickly and uh, we'll try to find one to copy later. But um, not exactly, you just you know, learn from his uh, approach. He would do the color um, background first. Um, he reportedly will dump the uh, brush uh, washing liquid, the water, the dirty water in the brush washer uh, in the end of the day uh, to a stack of uh, uh, plant paper. And then we'll, uh, come back next morning to, to paint on those stand paper. Um, yeah, like uh, here you can see some kind of water stands. But I think he, when he poured, poured the color, uh, as you can, we'll see some uh, documentary uh, video later. 
uh, he he's kind of um, he has a plan but definitely so the the brown will not go to, into the sky right so, so there are some uh, um, universal uh, natural uh, principles that he would follow basically uh, and then but there are some accidental uh, effects certainly but he's more controlled than than we think than we believe And uh, I like this many. It has the three primaries: the yellow, red, and the blue. Right? Very different than this kind of. This is more uh, traditional, but uh, um, very um, different than those who didn't really, you know, study oil. He he had he had the brushwork almost like a the bristle, um, the oil brush, very bold, very dull, dull stroke, not so sharp. That, he, that is his uh, pursuit. He, li he liked to, uh, the um, kind of uh, dull kind of style. He would do the dark uh, after the color, yeah. The color will come first, but but, but uh, sometimes it will it will add more. Yeah, definitely. And sometimes the, the like he painted trees, the dark comes first, and then uh, color to break the the red or you know uh, or green will apply to the. So I have to go quickly. We got so many. He's so productive. Like I said, every he will paint every day. Like Chibai Shi, his good friend. Okay, and this painting is huge. Actually, uh, when he was uh, one hundred or three, some he still paints like two meters tall painting like this. This is a very large painting, and this one huge painting. Oh, uh, he, he! I I think earlier you see a picture. He uh, was in the San Francisco International. Uh, airport, he did a grape painting there, a, a mural painting. I didn't see that in person, but maybe it's still there, right? Uh, you, you, if you want to check it. The, uh, the era before, uh, he's 85, he, he does this for a living, like, a, you know, other, um, old generation masters in the new era, they have to adapt to the socialist realism for the government because uh, that's what he, he was paid um, to do. So uh, this is uh, the, the city uh, of uh, Shanghai with a, a park in the foreground. Um, and uh, he also does this commune kind of countryside. People work uh, in group um and uh this one is a uh home museum of lu xun a, a, a left wing uh writer a favorite a favorite writer in uh, by the uh chairman mao actually so this is uh 1950s and yeah this is the last uh, he, this was done like uh, his age of over 100. And this is one of uh, his painting. I think it's done 103 or something. Yeah, he he, he started to record the age after 90, uh, nine, after 100. So this is a 101. This 101, he says. and one. Yeah, he did this painting. Amazing, right? And uh, here I want to show just two samples of uh, his uh, um, his uh, flower, flower and plant or veggie. This is veggie, like you know, we uh, we learn in other classes the uh, bochuan and the uh, uh, taro roots. Probably that's what he eat and uh, uh, corn. Very healthy diet. 
uh, here, the uh, uh, Morning Glory, um, he, he, he has this impressionistic view uh, or, or mind eye when he paints a, a, a real flower or landscape. Uh, he'll paint the, the feeling of uh, the object, like this flower gives him a feel like a circle on top. So he, he would just draw a circle. Um, and uh, so that, that's how he um, abstract, you know, he painted uh, the feeling of expression mystic. This is a, a good example of uh, what he, how, how he um, paint a, uh, a flower in impressionistic style. Okay, and uh, uh, this is one of my favorite in this collection. Uh, is it's called the uh, the light after rain or something? Uh, rain, yeah. Uh, the pouring ink really the the water just does does it work? For, yeah. Very as real, very colorful. And, uh, oh, he had a um, he he talked about the feeling. In different in different realm. So uh, some artists um, and some poets also uh, are more like a romanticism. They are a more subjective expression of uh, individual feeling of uh, uh, the world you know, towards the natural. Um, but uh, some artists uh, are more nationalistic or um, express the group uh subconscious of you know, as a nation or um uh or human human being you know a, 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 a mankind like shi bai's painting he try, in the end he tried to express the uh, the long for peace or something like that that's a kind of a uh, transcendent feeling you know uh, of the first stage is the individual feeling and then the group feeling or subconscious um and the third stage he tried to enter is the uni universe, the sense of universe. Like he in this uh, title, Yuzhou Universe, he tried to express uh, the uh, feeling of the the uh, the whole universe, yeah, the Tao or the uh, ontological being. He had. Uh, this this set of uh, twelve uh, small paintings called the uh, uh, random thoughts or something like uh, Fu uh, Fu Xiang uh, Xiao I forgot um, like album of uh, random uh, thoughts. This all come with like a, a, a wood uh, like a zigzag a qu zi a wave. Yeah, uh, that the first one was universe, right? This one it means. Uh, that entitled Kai to opening new grounds. It's all symbolism, symbolism, you know, I think. And it's very, uh, this marks the turning point. Uh, this was done in the late, late uh, 70s, a beginning, uh, uh, at the beginning of his uh, new style. It's a very important album opening new grounds. And this one is called the rebirth. It's a snow uh, winter scene, but with uh, just a little bit green on this uh, lower left, a little sprouts, right? That's the new birth, new life. And this, this one says uh, climbing a cl cliff. It's a traditional brushwork, but a new concept, right? And this one also just a zooming of a, a traditional um, painting with a figure and a fence. Uh, is, this one says a cleaning or yeah, walk, washing. Someone's cleaning this the boat there, as you can see. 
Uh, this one is uh, what's it, the title? Is it, I think it's part of the album. Um, something like a breakthrough or something. I forgot. Now you can see the the boat in the river here uh, with some you know traditional subject matter, but a different composition. He he used a square. He used a square format. Right? I think uh, square very squarish. Yeah, and the color is very impressionistic. Right on uh, this one. He, he tried to introduce the perspective into a, a traditional landscape uh, with the trees, interesting and overlapping. Uh, you won't see this kind of uh, in traditional painting. Okay. So let's see which one we want to, to do. I think um, we'll, we'll try to just, uh, uh, follow some some uh, this painting process maybe uh, we can choose one painting uh, and then we will look at his painting process and then try to to do that okay let me see may I ask a question Henry yes please that green for example that really vivid yellow green was he using western watercolor oh good question yeah he used the acrylic western watercolor uh acrylic color that's it yeah so yeah he used green directly from the, the uh, western color not a mixture of uh, uh indigo and the uh, gamboge I, I, I bet good question yeah he, he used acrylic but i don't know exactly what color he used you can use any color or any water media in, in, for this practice i will use japanese uh, uh, color and I will say what co comes up. I, I also have some green like that in the Maris. I will show you that that grass green. Yeah, this kind of green. We have we have this kind of green called the grass green. It's 562. Let me got some here. I, I just ran out of yellow, so I put it here. Um, I also want some lemon yellow instead of the uh, Gamboge yellow is cool, cooler. And uh, he used probably the ochre. I, I got ochre here, but it's really not. I also have ochre in the Maris, the new color series 676. You can get these colors from our website. We sell individually all the new colors from Western, uh, Western, Western watercolor. They are non-traditional hues, but he, he also used something very vibrant, like a purple, uh, like a rose. And I don't think we need that in this painting, but I, I was, I'll use more abstract color. The one I, my favorite is this one. So this, this blue is a very vibrant. I got some blue here it's from the Japanese. It's called the uh, Chetong. I'm not sure. It, it's uh, it's like the um, I think it's a cello or no, ultramarine cello, probably. And I got some. Uh, that looks like a cobalt blue to me. Cobalt, yeah, maybe cobalt. I got ultramarine also. The, the one he uses is cobalt, right? Okay. But what makes me curious, <clears throat> when I see work like this, I ask myself, is he doing that because he doesn't know how to do Chinese traditional painting? <laughs> no, he, 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 um, he has uh, transcended the boundary of the West the East. Yeah, uh, but he didn't learn tra traditional brushwork, you said. He went to Japan. Uh, no, no, no. And he started I, I, I think you misunderstood. He, he, he's relatively more traditional than his contemporaries. Um, he learned, uh, like this, you know, this, this water is very traditional, right? Um, I, I, I didn't collect all the, because they're not very, okay, you can see his traditional trees here. Yeah. 
um, and his uh, um, parallel uh, wrinkle technique, obviously, the houses is painted in China in the traditional way. And I think the, let's see. What are I showed you two examples earlier, uh, his uh, classical style, let me see. I can't find that too many. Oh, here. Yeah, th this is probably in my collection. I, I didn't collect all the early work because they're not so distinctive than, you know, uh, from other. But this is the traditional painting he did, like Yuan style uh, lake, lake view. And uh, his interpretation of traditional landscape. I, I won't say he's the best. Um, he, he doesn't try to fake the traditional, like, uh, you know, some um, artists would do a very dear copy, but he, he tried to reinterpret. And he will write his uh, study notes saying, you know, the source is from Tai Dynasty, some green and blue landscape. Um, so he, he used the contemporary colors, yes, to reinterpret. This is this one also, I think it's, uh, uh, you can also see from the, this book. I, this book is relatively earlier. It's published in 19, 1981. So he just uh, uh, started at uh, the beginning of his, and he still have like uh, 30 years to go, right? So his new style is formed after his uh, 85. And uh, to answer your question, let me just pull out. I, I, you can see from this relatively early painting, there's, they're quite traditional. You can see the, the, the shape of the mountain is, is more, uh, like the southern. Uh, the composition is traditional, but the brushwork is careless by traditional um, standards. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think uh, if you look at it very closely, his brushwork is very uh, traditional. He doesn't like the Fu Bao Shi, for example. You know, the split, split brush, it won't, it won't really. Uh, it, I, to me, Fu Bao Shi is more. And, and uh, anti tradition. His, uh, his, his, his mountain is more rounded and his stroke is, uh, he uses a soft brush. Uh, let her, let, let's watch, uh, let, let's wa uh, watch a documentary, like 10 minutes documentary. And he starts in, like, you know, you can see here in the, uh, this brushwork is quite traditional. And he, you know, just to see how he draw the, the little things like a uh, uh, boat or the houses, uh, very tradition. The, he, the tradition has different uh, faces, right? His favorite artist is the Shi Tao. If you're familiar with the Shi Tao, you can recognize the Shi Tao's uh, style. Shi Tao, his favorite uh, uh, traditional artist is Shi Tao and the Ba La Shan Ren. Yeah, so th these are more traditional, right? Not a direct copy, but th these are his own composition. But uh, uh, this one's uh, like I mentioned, this is a Song Dynasty mountain. Uh, but he, you know, he, if you just copy this, he won't be uh, considered a grand master, right? So he, and his uh, uh, flower and birds painting following the tradition of uh, Shanghai uh, master Wu Changshuo, he's a, uh, his taste is in the in the uh, school of uh, uh, bronze and stones, steely rubbing that kind of uh, we call it the stone and the bronze antiquarian taste. That that's um, you, thank you. you. you know, what do you want, <laughs> Barbara? What what do, what do you have more comments? So uh, this is the morning glory, and you can see very strong influence with, uh, from Shi Bai Shi, his contemporary. His he's probably uh, thirty, uh, twenty some year younger than Shi Bai Shi, thirty years younger. His uh, his wine plant, his grapes, 
Uh, he did a grave for the San Francisco airport in the early 80s. Because of the wine, wine uh, winery, right? Yeah. And his painting also learned from a, a char, the, like a charging painting and the and the, a, an artist named Shigu. Uh, this is very traditional to me, the ink paint, ink monochrome. And, uh, so no doubt he's a uh, very traditional Japanese. Um, many uh, come back and become Chinese masters, uh, like uh, the Lingnan school, you know, Lingnan school and uh, many Shanghai school uh, masters are educated in Japan because Japanese Western art is, is already um, digested in, in the Eastern taste maybe. So he, the principle he learned from his uh, Japanese teacher in, in oil is uh, look the whole picture constantly, check the whole picture, the wholeness of the painting constantly. So that, that, that kind of thing, uh, maybe um, he, yeah, he, he didn't, uh, he, he had uh, some friend from uh, France, returned from France, like, uh, Lin Feng Mian, right? he, he would do more authentic uh, Western painting, but he never got into uh, real, maybe the mood of uh, uh, oil. He, his, his oil is, is just a so-so, you know, I, I think from the magazine publication photos, I think not very impressive, but his, his uh, traditional painting are also very just so-so. Uh, uh, but uh, later, you know, the after his nineties, uh, I really took off. So that's uh, um, um, longevity is is a um, it's definitely a very important factor uh, in the uh, in make you know in achieving um, mastership or what they call it. And if you want to become a Master in Chinese painting, you have to live like Barbara, your father's age, right? 1906. Yeah. 103. 103. Oh, yeah, that's, that's already. But very... he wrote a book on the last year of his life. He finished a book on Trump. Right. Yeah, he still writes. Yeah. So, uh, as a writer, right? yeah. Uh, let me share the uh, some. Uh, interesting observation of, uh, um, let me see, we've got some. Uh, some I read somewhere in, um, about uh, uh, Zhu Qizhan, he, they, they talked in general, the uh, conditions of making a master. Uh, I, I, I translated to, with Google, where's that? Last night, probably you haven't read that so here. Let me go back. Okay, here. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is the, the uh, um, uh, okay, it, it says, a person studying Chinese painting to become famous or become a master must have eight requirements, eight requirements or conditions, namely interest. So everybody have interest. Right, or passion, maybe diligence. So you have to work on it. Life, life experience. You have to travel or to study abroad, or go to museums, or you know, just uh, uh, just doing what you, you 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 whatever you you experience will contribute, like uh, um, good or bad, you know. So life experience, everybody is different. And uh, knowledge, so you read books, uh, history, poetry, especially knowledge in, in our uh, sister art, I think. Uh, he's, uh, um, he, studied, yeah, he, 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 like, he loves poetry and music and uh, art history, of course. Talent, um, that's everybody have. I think uh, you cannot learn talent. Uh, it's like the, your, your, your uh, personality. Yeah, that's that's what's next. Character, character means uh, your personality, 
your uh and you know to live like that long he has a very good temper there's a story saying in the banquet uh the the waitress uh, accidentally poured some uh, wine or 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 soap whatever uh, on his uh, dress on his suit suit everybody obsessed um and he was so calm and said okay okay um very, very, you know, uh, calm for when he deal with this, things like that. Uh, in the cultural revolution, he was uh, uh, criticized, and uh, the red guards pour ink on his his uh, uh, clothes, and he he won't, uh, you know, he 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 won't get uh, mad on that. He he just uh, he can he can live with this kind of embarrassment. So that kind of personality is really uh, comfort, you know. Uh, and but in painting, he's very aggressive. But in life, he's very gentle, very very gentle, very gentle man. Um, the realm, realm has to do with the artistic realm. Uh, that like I talked, he talked, he discussed in his in his book the three realms he he achieved. First, to express a personal feeling. Like a Western uh, impressionism or uh, post-impressionism forest, and uh, later he uh, he he paints to express the feeling of the nation, you know, the revolution, uh, the new society, that kind of uh, patriotism, patriotism, some kind of socialist realism, whatever. And late, uh, in the late years, last years, he tried to to uh, integrate with the nature, the heaven, the universe. The Tao, so that's uh, the the realm. If you have just a you know a, a feeling uh, of personal feeling, you 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 are at a, a, a already uh, a level beyond uh, just to copy the uh, whatever you see or you know others, right? So, you, but the realm really determines a master how how high you can achieve, and then finally, most importantly, longevity. So if he died before, uh, like eighty-five, like many artists, uh, like Chi Bei Hong died at uh, fifty-seven, uh, Fu Baoshi died at uh, sixty-five, just like my age, or you know, I, he they, so they could become even more um, to achieve more if those artists have lived as long as Zhu Xizhan. But Zhu Qizhan was, this, you know, a, a late achiever, or what they call this. He, he didn't really make it before 85. So Qi Bai Shi, for example, uh, started to create his own style after 65, and uh, mostly yeah, in the 80s and 90s. He died in 1997 or 96. So Zhu Qizhan uh, had uh, uh, 20 years after 85 to create his uh, best pieces in life. So that's a very important factor in his, uh, well, what, you know, it's very encouraging for us, I hope. <laughs> so you can, you still have enough time to, to learn something new like him, right? So Huang Binghong also, Huang Binghong, you know, uh, still making weekly study uh, plan at the 90s. So this art, or Li Keran, also I mentioned, right? They all kept uh, studying uh, new things uh, until the last day. And Li Keran said, uh, "I wish I could live uh, two hundred years old." Then he murmured, "Even then, I don't have enough time. I can only be a little bit better than why I, I I I was uh, then, you know." <laughs> so. <laughs> To live, to, to <laughs> okay. Um, uh, let's see. And you can take a closer look of the uh, brushwork here as a uh, there are many water stains that are created randomly by uh, pouring, and but uh, later he would add the detail to uh, you know 
So you can see the, the training of uh, his calligraphy uh, in this, uh, this detail that the houses, his, his, his uh, brushwork, right? All right, let me stop this. Um, I, okay, I think the, the um, video I'm going to show you is uh, very important. And it, because we're so lucky that we can see these things, I didn't have access to this um, before. But now you know everything is online, so we can we can watch he paint before we do it. I'm going to show you and translate this. Okay, I will end it. I I I think I I will turn the volume down a little bit. Let me see, how do I do that? Volume, okay, here, I can turn the volume down. So I can comment on that. All right, let's share. Now we'll answer all the questions about uh, the medium he used, okay. So he's standing, not sitting. Yeah, he painted from memory of his observation in nature. He, he relied on his memory to paint, uh, to pour, pour colors. Here we go. The, the qi shi, you know how to translate that, Barbara? The qi and the, its movement. His, his inner vitality, yeah, rhythmic inner vitality. vitality. Our, uh, structural tendency is the shi, right? Yeah. And then after that, he will add detail like trees, rocks, rivers, and the boats. So in the beginning, he captured the qi shi with a large uh, brushwork on, in the background mountain. Now he used a small brush, a dry brush, to outline the contour and the uh, shaping, the texture. This is a smaller brush. He dot the trees in different tonality to paint a different distance of mountains. He applied the color into the, the ink before it dries. Pouring ink with the brush. See, the, the palette is on the other hand, not, not uh, without a brush. And uh, so brush and uh, pouring together. The calligraphy ha has to be, the stroke has to be varied in uh, like a, a, a three waves in a, in a dash to avoid stiffness. <laughs> yeah, he used small brushes to highlight with line and dots. It takes uh, years of uh, practice to get to this stage of freedom. Um, he would he would do some sketch in the field. Oh, this this video was taken uh, at the age ninety one, so he was ninety one when this uh, documentary was made. Yeah, 
you first consider the placement, the layout. You have to arrange the objects according to the uh, composition. And he that's his imaginative composition. And then when he satisfied with the layout, he will start to paint. So never start to paint without a clear um, mental representation in mind with the composition. The mental representation comes first. So you, until you are sure where the rocks, the trees is start to paint. So you, he mix color and ink together. So they are applied in one stroke, not separately as other traditional method. Although the, the, the ink line comes first and then he color it with ink and a mix, uh, ink and a color mix. These are the willow trees, not the bank. He used pushing ink technique, plowing position. When you, when you do the wash, you still have to show the brush work. Not not just the flat. The houses are um, drawn with a uh, wet and dry. Now the cleaning is completed, and then inscribed with a uh, Song Dynasty poetry. A poem described in the, in the uh, scene. There's a long history of uh, pouring ink in starting in Tang Dynasty. The ink is considered uh, five shades of color. He uh, tried to capture the movement of a uh, mountain in the variety of ink. Starting from the background, look at that. Not the dark as other artists may do. Not the dark um, in the focal point area. So the ink are not blended evenly. It's blended on the paper, right? The brush has a um, different tones. That's how he, he loaded the brush. And break ink dark into light in this case. Dry dark into wet light. This dragon um, position to the waves of. Him. So he uh, he's, sometimes he draw the dark first. Sometimes he draw he wash first, then uh, define. Emphasize on the rhythm. The, it's very important to suggest the void uh, as water or clouds with light ink. The darks are the rocks and trees, houses, and the, the light are uh, cloud, clouds and water. It, this describes the uh, raining season in Jiangnan area. This is a time poetry. The mountain is, is uh, in between being and non being. Okay, this is the album we talked about. Okay. 
Oh, this is seal with, with the Chibash uh, mood seal. He's considered painting as his exercise. He was uh, 91, and he thinks he's still uh, curious, uh, learning. Okay, that's it. All right, we don't you love his face? Oh, yeah, that he's so, um, like a child, you very, very pure, uh, very, um, friendly person. Yeah, many people, um, record, you know, his personality, he very. Uh, easy going, yeah. So let's uh, let's do some pouring pouring ink to start with pouring color. Yeah, I I will choose a. Uh, what about uh, something green? Right? Do you like the greens here or maybe? Try to make something easier for you. This co this three color is like a red, blue, yellow. Um, it's kind of hard to select my favorite. It's uh, because. It's so um, maybe uh, we just do it on our own. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to you. Oh, let me show you what I did. Uh, is, Okay, um, I, I made a painting without looking at any of his, and uh, uh, basically I start with a, a light uh, background wash here, and I try to create three grounds uh, from light to dark. Right? So I start from the background and then the middle ground, and then uh, basically in, in uh, blue, and then the brown, so yellow, blue, and brown. Um, because we don't do the, the, the blue sky, the blue is in, in the mountain. And also I put some reflection in the, in the water. I didn't see, he, uh, he probably did that, but uh, um, I'm not copying him. And after uh, the next morning, I added this, uh, after it's all dry, I added this branch and I entitled it, um, the, the uh, Autumn wind is clean. You see that this is a little bit too wide. I mean, I like yours. So this is a, this is semi-sized, and he would use the unsized. Okay. I'll I'll just repeat probably this process and see what uh, comes up. Okay, um, I can put one of his, pain. yeah, I, I'll put this pin, but not exactly copy because we cannot really duplicate this, this uh, pin. So I will use uh, uh, a little saucer, maybe. I, 
I cut the paper into one eighth, the whole sheet, and I, I fold it into half. That's a square, two squares. And then I cut into uh, four squares like this. That's about 30 and a half by 30 and a, and a half. So we're using unsized? This is unsized double shun. Thank you. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't crinkle it because he didn't do that. Okay. So I will do a purple color. Let me see if I can make it. It's a botch brush. I'll use my super wash or magnolia brush. Actually, it's bigger than super wash. It's a soft brush, and uh, I will make uh, a uh, mixture of. Uh, let me I, see what I got here. I got from the other the dove color. I got some blue here. So. The tough, the pig, the pigeon we did the, the other day had the, the purple here happened to be. So this is a, a color left from my previous class. So I just used that. So I got rouge. I got uh, uh, some uh, opaque, opaque uh, mineral color. Uh, the, uh, whoops, I already got some stains on it. On the paper, this is uh, interesting. So let me just pour it. Then. So you, you, you cannot really control this kind of, uh, but generally you want to separate the heaven and earth with the first stroke, then the rules will emerge, you know, um, right? So I want to, uh, area perspective theory tells us that, uh, you know, there are more uh, warm color uh, as you uh, get getting, uh, closer to you, and you know you will see bronze more in the nearby mountain, and you will see more blues in the distance, right? And basically, you you play with three colors: uh, red, blue, and the uh, and uh, uh, yellow. And but in painting, you don't really make judgment on what color is that. You want to see how much blue, how much yellow, how how much red. Uh, I see some more red in, in the uh, on the right and yellow there. So some middle ground. I would use uh, uh, maybe a little sharper cobalt or whatever. Yeah, that's the color he got in the middle, right? And uh, you leave a lot of uh, blank, so you don't finish uh, uh, the whole painting in one step. So kind of combined, but the principle is uh, the cool in the distance, warm in the middle in this case. All right. So this is the... Here, bluer. I don't want to really copy, so I have to look at my own. You can you can stand it standing and then try to the 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 big purple look like a um, upward movement, in the rising clouds. So I have to use a lot of water. I think and you can you can use uh, one color and then change it. That's uh, sometimes I do. I just use like a pink to start with, and then you can add 
blue to make it purple. You can also do that. And you can, you can use a clean brush to guide it. Just the word to guide it. It's kind of hard to paint, like because he probably poured the the color on the on the paper overnight, let it dry overnight. It takes time to to create this kind of uh, abstract art. Yeah, but I try to fake it a little bit. And the more you know the the paper, the medium, uh, the better you you have more freedom to to do. So I I just paint a little bit. So let's do. It. Uh, basically, in Western art, you would you would, uh, paint whatever color according to the value. The value that is more important than the uh, temperature, and you can vary that after you 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 have uh, like you you put in you put on a uh, value you like, and then you can change the hue a little bit with a yellow, blue. Uh, or red to vary that, you know, that kind of uh, uh, approach is what I learned from Western art. Uh, the foreground is kind of flat. So the the eye level moves in Chinese painting is not uh, fixed. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to add uh, dark. I, mean, I, I started using ink maybe. For this, I just put some ink first. Otherwise, it won't be any ink. I got overnight ink to to resituate ink. I got some uh, gelatin water here. I try to to soak it before the class, but it's not completely soaked. But um, I think it's uh, okay. I just put it in the in the ink leftover ink to add some more binding there. Otherwise, it would not uh, uh, stay on, on the paper. And it's more granny. Not dark enough. You can grind it. So uh, when you add something, you you want to vary the, you break it, you know, you, you kind of uh, dark into light right, in this case, so that creates more uh, interest than just uh, repeat same same thing. There's a little cliff there, some platform on top for the houses. I will add to that later. So you want to keep that area. Uh, loose. Okay. I, you you press the brush to get that kind of uh, texture. Maybe. And there's a valley here. This is not in the middle. I believe it should be a little bit maybe towards this side. Okay. All right. And I just use dry brush. To add some pink in the in the shady part, uh, you you can still use color. Do this. I'll use some oh, yellow ochre here. Uh, you can change the brush for the yellow, the ochre color. You can add a little brown, a little brown here. Vary a little bit. It's warm. And uh, so this part could be a little brownish. For in my experience, the brown usually is close to, closest to the viewer. And 
you, you don't want it covered in ink yet. So just let it dry maybe a little bit. The brown could serve as a base for the greens actually. Um, if you want, you can put on the back. That will just will keep the the uh, the effect you already got. Some sometimes I do this, and that that changes the like the color right from back. Um, and you can also cover the, the ink with pure yellow ochre. So it's sometimes combined in you know, front and back. I don't know if he does that. Uh, he got the more darks and later the the greens. Yeah. The yellow and the purple uh, serves as as a complementary color. You, you learn that from the Western art, right? So you, if you put uh, yellow in the purple, it makes it uh, very um, dramatic. Just charge a little bit, not really charge, just to vary that a little bit. It's dry brush, uh, impressionistic, you combine two colors. You don't mix, you don't blend it, you, you let it um, blend in the, in the eye of the audience, right? Okay. I got some yellow down top. That's okay, accidentally. Let me, uh, there's some green in the blue. You can use uh, um, If you like the, the effect, you can set it anytime, you know, then um, you keep the, this layer first and then you continue. Um, or you can keep, if you keep working, Wet into wet, you might um, become very muddy. So be careful a little bit. Uh, let me see if I need to. Extend the slope a little bit. So we can add a uh, it's a light green color, but uh, I'm not sure if uh, that would work. Because in Western theory, the the distant layer is more like a very blue, this color here. But he got some very light. Yes, it could be a oh, very light cobalt. I think he would do light cobalt. And then you can vary a little bit into with yellow or something. So I just do a very loose um, let's see. You can use water to to partially wet the paper so you soften the the stroke. I think uh, he has an idea like the, the sun is on the uh, uh, upper right, upper left. Um, so there's a beam kind of, this, this against the light maybe um, that creates a kind of a beam like this. So this is the shitty side. But if you paint the beam, it's too uh, forced or artificial. So if, if the best is the, the water does it. So we, I can see the water just kind of bleed down some create that kind of uh, radiation. But it's kind of uh, hard to reproduce. That's why this, this kind of painting is very, um, hard to reproduce. Dry into wet. Uh, I take advantage of that uh, um, 
watermark. I think he probably did this, like right, what I'm doing, Use, using Kuba. So it's kind of doubled, echoing, echoing the front and in a different uh, uh, range. Same pattern. But this goes up and it goes down a little bit there in the end. That create a slope here. And that that area is a valley with the clouds, white clouds. The clouds in the in the distance have the, the, the shape. In the in the in nearby clouds is a mist. So about that. And you don't want to overwork. If you see something good, you can let it dry. Uh, okay. Like the path of uh, the, the you can vary this area with some yellow, green. But very light. Maybe a little bluer because this is the middle ground. If there's a shady side or the, the shady side is here because he's good at the oils. He, he had the sense of a shade, a light direction because it's against light. But uh, in, in Chinese painting, we only consider yin against yang, the weather. So top usually young, the shady part is under. All right, when I started depicting, I really got loose on the last in the rhythm. So really, this you try to keep the momentum while you add those nuances or you know, details. Try to keep the momentum. Uh, also, you, you know, my mountain tends to be different shape. So if I force it to copy the masters, it may not work. So just keep your mind open all the time. That's a little bit color suggests to the uh, mountain uh, forest in the in the mist, but in a strong s s light. Uh, you, you want to make contrast, uh, so the color must be stronger in the foreground or middle ground to contrast with the back. You want to eliminate the unwanted white. So keep anything uh, a good accident. Don't commit too early, though. It's kind of uh, uh, keep a hold. The judgment has to be made on uh, in the whole whole painting, not just the individual. So if you stand up, you will see it. I'm going to show you the whole thing so you can see what I see. 
Yeah, my uh, question now is the, the, this area, the white. As I mentioned, the, the white clouds is usually in the distance in nature. Um, the, the mist, it has no shape. If I keep this white shape, it will, uh, but you know, if I keep it, it, it looks like a mid-ground. So it's, it could still um, work, I think. So I'm debating on, on that. Right now, I got some accidental blur there. Is that like a smoke? That's okay. It could be just a smoky fog. Okay, there's another strong color. So I'm look looking at the pattern of the uh, the dark the dark blue uh, the the uh, cobalt, whatever it is, and uh, I I try to identify the uh, shape. So this is very intense, but it's a small one. The here is a medium one, maybe. But I I tend to uh, change it a little bit. So for for me, I have a a large maybe a, I need to just need a small, not a big one here. some in between these two. This, this, this dots, I kind of like it. It suggests something interesting. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll keep it. I'll keep it. You, you cannot really duplicate this kind of thing. And uh, some obvious shape, it has no reason. So I try to kind of give it a reason or just uh, hide it. The round circle doesn't make uh, sense in nature. So I want to change that. And you can add ink later, but uh, if you add wet into wet, it will smear. Just be aware of that, like here. Okay, um, let's try it first. Uh, I can just use the iron. You can you can use a hair dryer. Cover it with a. You can, you can use a wax if you don't want to drop it. I can use the uh, rice paper if you want to. Silicone backing paper, the release paper comes with the silicone to back to the, the painting. Oops, didn't take it off. So I, I tried, I hit set this so far. Some more layers. So you, it takes layers of the uh, ink and the color combined to create the final result. You can even, you know, wet, uh, dry mount it. <laughs> and then paint on top of that. 
this is the trying mounting will not block the the absorbance, but it will block a little bit. So. Wet mounting takes time. Okay. Now you don't have to dry completely. If you just dry like 80%, it should be enough uh, to add more. Okay. I start to see some uh, texture. I don't need that. Is the, the steam create something? Uh, so I'll add some more ink and then uh, the, the highlight, the, what we call embedding colors for the forest. Uh, in this shady area, basically, I want to prepare for the dark greens with more ink. This brush is a split. The, the ridge of the mountain, what we call the dragon vein, this is the traditional term for 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 the uh, uh, for shape for for formation of the, the the hills, and that's very important to identify and put the emphasis on. You can, if you see a shape like an animal or, or like a tiger, a crowing tiger or uh, a dragon, that will help. See movement, you know, to create some movement. But don't uh, make the black and uh, dark and light too even. So you want to create some dance and sparse, some uh, some sudden drop like a, a, a cliff will be good. So not just a triangle, boring triangle is the shape. You can use peach sap uh, if you want to control bleeding. There's a slope here, actually, it goes down. And, uh, I try to make a small cliff here, a valley here. It goes up again. This is a traditional. Quite traditional. These uh, these are very abstract without uh, ink. So this will be close to sun. Okay, that's fine. And I uh, want to define this uh, double tw this twin peak. I call it. But we only 
um, outline one that th that kind of like echoes behind. So that's we want to create the peak. This part is a little nervous. I want to add some something to it. So we use opaque color now. Then you can um, dilute it with a, with a, this color, I think. This modern color called grass green. Let's combine with it to make it yellowish. And you can you can use split brush. I think he uses like a full brush style. Split brush, just some dots, maybe. It's pretty small. I don't have time to do that. I just do it quickly and add some blue to the other side of the slopes, maybe to change a little here. You can make some color change around the way. So some tend to be more greener, some more bluer, yellow and blue variation. Okay. So they're basically just the blocks of the color, not so much detail, but he would use some vertical bars to suggest that they are trees later, I think. Okay. The, this part could be a little bit. I'll simplify it. Okay, we just make uh, three groups, maybe one large one, some small. Concentration disperse. I think we need to define this shape of the mountain a little bit. I want to organize a, a, a slope so the dots doesn't really uh, flat. You know, they stand on a on a slope. Uh, to define a slope would be the best. So the purpose of uh, dots are continued continued dots with uh, not exactly along one line, but uh, you can help to define that kind of. Okay. And, uh, I'm looking at the mirror in my mirror image in, on the video. I see some some obvious uh, things here. Uh, I, I think we can make this a uh, yellow part. Just a little. Uh, my, my yellow tends to spread too much. Let's see, Let change that.
Do you want really dark in this area so that contrast with the background? And basically, it's all blue. So you can, you can change. But do have some warm in the foreground to begin with. And then you can add blue to it if you want to unify the painting the one single, simple theme color. You don't want to make it too, uh, too much variation, like a, we call it too hua, not like a blossom, too blossom. Doesn't make sense. Okay, let me some trees. Oh, uh, that that tree should be behind the village. So let me first of all draw some buildings, dwellings. Do we have uh, like fifteen minutes? Okay. We can use a uh, uh, small detail brush to draw this, these buildings. Okay, and just uh, just use black color from the palette. It's thicker. It's not that much. Okay. If you enlarge it, you will see details. This corner, right? <clears throat> Just draw a two star, two star building that sets the the height of the group. I do the other roof first, maybe the skyline first. I call it skyline. Let's see. It's against the clouds behind. So no matter, you can simplify some. Doesn't matter. So as long as you have this uh, kind of up and down roof, and then just add something under it with windows. You don't have to just define everything. So doors, windows. Just the impression. Some horizontal, some vertical bars to fill in the space. It will look like a village. Okay. And then you can you can dot more trees. Uh, you can add some bars in representing the uh, trunk. To put some dots and uh, ink. And put some dots first on the under under the green is going to add. And you can draw those uh, trunk with ink basically under it a little bit. Verticals, and you can also add a little bit short ones, but not uh, too long because uh, this is closer and that's uh, far away. So, you, you want to define these dots in, uh, as a trees by adding this little, little uh, vertical dots, if you like, under it, just to suggest they are. Forest, not grass, not other things, just a little bit. And it could be uh, trees in the shady, uh, the, the tree dots as the foliage as well, just, just some ink dots. And this could be alternated, you know, can, you can do some dots, some, some. Uh, uh, Several layers if you take. Let me just. Here. And you can see my 
ink bleach here. That that's what do you see in the original painting. There's something you know. Or uh, if you pay, keep painting this, this, it will it will uh, blur like that. Then that's accidental. But I I think that's see, you see what uh, in the original that big big uh, watermark. That that's how it comes. So, but uh, I don't have enough uh, time to let it work like that way. I try to fake it, but uh, you don't have to have. But a little bit here, it's it's okay. That's, I just want to show you how it uh, was, uh, was done. And then you you want to set it maybe first. And then you add color, or you can just add a color like there. He did before the ink gets dry. But I want to dry a little bit, so we're not too much here so um, I use this vibrant color yellow is green color just pure color dot the tree and up and down there's some blue I think some yellow use two brush then dot on top of the dark. That's very important. If you use the opaque color alone, you look like a uh, pastel painting, very chalky. So you want to have some ink behind. Some, uh, some dots, like bushes everywhere you want. Um, still, you want to keep some rhythm, some grouping, some small, medium, and uh, large grouping to indicate movement to, and to paint along the contour. Okay, I need to highlight the beauty with a uh, brown color. Pure brown, brown. You go through the line, but not actually uh, repeat it. Just like a highlight. Uh, actually, shape, shape, shade it a little bit under the eave. Maybe also uh, just uh, give a little color. There. You can leave the roof uh, white. It. It has some tone, like blue unifying tone. You can do that later. But basically, uh, you can leave it just a, a white. I, I'll, I'll probably do the roof with a little red. We will let's see the color. Oh, we can do a little bit reddish brown. Just. Uh, it feels like a Southern California. Uh, actually, it should be black in Chinese. Uh, Southern China, they use dark tie. Put a little bit brown in the tree as well. And you can actually stop at any point. This kind of thing has no more definitive and um, it could be, it's up to you. And you could take days or months or even years to finish. You, you have to look at it in distance and it will demand, it will tell you what to add sometimes. But to try to keep initial momentum, that's very important. Okay. The, let me set it first and then uh, with your unifying wash, if needed. Glazing, using transparent color to, to unify the, the tone or the uh, color tone. It's a basically very bluish. See some color on this paper, so you cannot use, use, keep using it. Uh, change the, the paper. Okay. 
just use the vested uh, mm -hmm. This is not a good idea. Uh, but it will happen even you know with wet mounting, the color will drop. Because uh, the only way to avoid that is to avoid thick buildup. So that's why uh, Mr. Yang suggested that you, you add it back after mounting and uh, uh, try to avoid this thick buildup. But uh, we we you know we cannot uh, really skip this part. I just add back the, the color loss. And that actually create more subtle. Uh, it was too solid, right? Now I have the opportunity to adjust that. So I can make it uh, even subtle for some, uh, it's more uh, like uh, rubbing or uh, the stone and the bronze, but like the eroded bronze kind of feel to it. So that's good. Sometimes some color could be good to make it look older, a bit more natural, give it some more texture. Uh, I think this may be too yellow. I don't want to change that. Yeah, just the nuance, nuance the uh, details, and you can you can wash the houses if it's too uh, contrasting. You can you can make it to uh, to blend a little bit with a uh, little green or, or gray, whatever. I think the the white wall is go okay. I just want to make it a clouds a little, uh, maybe a little softer. I'm not sure if that will help. Just a little bit. But they're not so white. So I leave the white for the, for the, um, the sun in the sky, the sunlight. It's, it's hard to see when you have partially wet, partially dry painting. Try to fake this uh, water stain a little bit. I think time, one minute left, so I'm going to sign this anyway. So we'll say Qi Lao. We, we call him Qi Lao. That's what uh, his friends and students call him. Um, he's a middle, his fir first letter, his given name, is a qi. See, this, this is the character here. This character, qi, so, uh, with mountain reticle and the zi the qi, like a self, it's pronounced the qi. Uh, we just say fang, fang means a uh, Mim mimic copy or mimic from China. Can you see? Lao means uh, old or old master. Like 
白石，嗯。Usually we call someone's last name Lao, like Lao Li, Lao Chen, or Lao Wang, uh, with respect. We call it Lao, like a teacher. Uh, your teacher, you can call it. but uh, after uh, he reaches some age. Okay, and then uh, the year of the ox. Small seal. Okay, now let's uh, zoom out. And, uh, some part is still wet, so you cannot really see the uh, the true values, uh, darkness. Like the yellow, too much yellow. Just do it like that. I just want to blend a little bit. Maybe this part is uh, too. Um, fussy. I just want to. Like in, into a blot. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, any any questions? Uh, any questions? I before we finish. So how is it going? Anybody? Any questions? <laughs> yeah. Are you following me? I, I think it's hard to to follow. Huh? Um, yeah. This. Yes, we're very absorbed in what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so you, you have time uh, to keep practicing until next uh, class. I haven't decided uh, which one. I will probably do Shilu. He's a representative of uh, another regional school called the Chang'an or Xi'an school. Okay. So uh, again, I, I don't have a guest and host mountain. Oh, uh, your question is about a guest and host. I have two mountains that are not guest and host. Oh, you mean like the, the near and the far, or the the, the these two mountains in the back? Uh, one should be bigger than the other one, right? Um, here, maybe he doesn't really consider the host guest, but uh, uh, the mass, you know, the size of this mountain is bigger than this one, uh, and it slightly kind of change the the, the uh, uh, shape a little bit. And this one is the distance, so you you may consider this uh, foreground, middle. In the far ground with a uh, remote uh, mountain. 
So that's uh, four four layers. So you you can have uh, the the dark in this part. So I, I'll probably add a little more accent on this corner. So this is the nearest ground, and uh, I just want to add a little dark. So this final awakening touch uh, could add the darkest to dark. You still have, if you if you want, you still have time to to add. And that's about it, I think. So this. This, this for this little forest is the the nearest nearest, and then this one should less detail, should be less detail, and then no trees on the on distance. So I think the area area linear perspective is more uh, the uh, ancient uh, rules, you know, with a uh, what we call the mountain and trees could be. Uh, Changed, you know, in, in varied in shape, but what uh, consistent is the underlying law of it, like uh, uh, the proportion of trees and the rocks, uh, the formation, the the movement of the land, the the dragon vein, uh, that kind of thing is is the fundamental. A principle that guides your your painting. So you you don't want to very. Uh, it's okay to uh, the host can host and, and guest is just uh, uh, yeah. It's a it's a metaphor like a Confucian scholars used to uh, to expand the dominant uh, peak and the subjective heels around it, right? They use the metaphor like a subject and the emperor. Uh, that's that's the traditional way. So the emperor is just standing in the middle. In the, the so this painting is more uh, like a Western kind of uh, style composition. Could be more with a linear perspective, area perspective. Uh, yeah, there's you can call this. Subject mounting or that kind of subject mounting, I don't know. It's really not important anymore. It's a, but they are not equal. That's a, even thank you. Know, you. Yeah, uh, like we said, in any society, um, even in democracy, there's still hierarchy, still nobility, still uh, inherited positions or dominant positions. Uh, advantages to, to a disadvantage or so subjective dominant. This kind of uh, um, unif unevenness is uh, unequal or unequality, <laughs> unevenness is what we call the reason of beauty. So in, in painting, we don't want everything the same. We want to vary the shape, the size, dark and the light, uh, the uh, angle of uh, lines or something like that. slope. Okay, thank you for participating to this live class. Uh, thank, thank everybody you. Uh, in the regular classroom also for taking part. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. bye. Next bye. week is Thanksgiving. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Thank you for uh, joining me. Not next week. Happy we don't have class next week. Uh, okay. <laughs> see you after Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. You happy too. Thanksgiving. Bye -bye. Thank you. Happy, th it. happy Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. Oops, I just recording. I I I think I.